My wallet was getting a bit old, so yesterday I walked into a nearby gift shop to buy a new one. The owner informed me that every wallet at the shop was available at a fixed price of just 400 rupees. And that's when I saw it. Hidden amongst a pile of wallets was a leather wallet with a few pieces of paper sticking out of it. It was not difficult to figure out that someone had mistakenly kept 500 rupees in that wallet. So I quickly paid 400 rupees to the cashier and walked out with a brand new wallet with 500 rupees inside it. I call this the loaded wallet theory. And while it's rare for this to happen when you're shopping, it happens a lot more frequently in the stock markets and when you are evaluating companies. Take Mazgaon Dock Shipbuilders Limited for example. The company released its annual report on the 30th of May and a summation of its cash and bank balances comes to a little over 11,480 crores in liquid assets. Now 11,480 crores when divided over the company's 20.16 crore equity shares gives us a cash per share of 570 rupees. So while Mazgaon Dock Shipbuilders Limited had 570 rupees in cash for every share, on that same day, that is the 30th of May, a single share was being quoted at 283 rupees. Which essentially means the market capitalization of Mazgaon Dock Shipbuilders Limited was just 50% of the cash it had in its books. In fact, let me read out what I wrote in my diary that day. If I had 5,720 crores with me, I would have bought the Mazgaon Dock Shipbuilders Company in its entirety. I would have then got the company delisted, walked down to their bank and written a cheque of 11,480 crores in my name. Effectively, I would have emptied the company's bank account and made a profit of 100% on my investment, a cool 5,760 crores. Damn, if only I had that money. On the face of it, identifying companies that are cash rich but valuation poor can seem like a profitable investment. And so, in this video, I shall examine this interesting investment concept in greater details as we look at some more examples, some additional data and a checklist of scenarios one needs to look out for. For many centuries, cash has been the primary tool to value a business. However, it was in the 1930s and thanks to the efforts of one Benjamin Graham that valuing businesses became a more calculative endeavor. Graham preferred to examine a company's net current assets to determine if the company was investment worthy or not. And if the NCAV of a business was greater than its market capitalization, then in Graham's view, the company is undervalued. It's a principle that the most devout value investors still swear by. And since cash is a subset of the NCAV, it promises to offer an even bigger margin of safety when valuing a business. In all fairness, it was a lot easier in the 1930s to find companies that were trading below cash. And while this has become a lot more difficult in the 21st century, companies trading below their NCAV or even their cash do show up from time to time. In fact, using a standard stock screener, I found 11 companies with a market cap of over 100 crores that complied with our NCAV greater than market cap criteria. And of these 11 companies, two of them, 63 Moons Technologies and Indian Card Cloth have a net cash position which is higher than their respective market capitalization. But if we think logically, then a company's cash and bank balance is not the only liquid asset that's there. In fact, many companies invest in liquid funds, money market funds, and these short-term but redeemable investments also need to be considered in accurately determining the company's cash position. So I did that and sure enough, a better picture started to emerge with a few more joining our list of companies where the net cash position is higher than its market cap. Now, before you start logging on to your trading account, it is also very important to understand why these companies are valued this way. Well, the common narrative seems to be around declining sales, loss-making businesses, poor growth prospects, trouble with promoters, compliance issues, etc. And more often than not, the high cash, low market cap situation is simply because of a substantial fall in the share price. In many of these scenarios, even the ardent value investor would not touch these stocks with a 10-foot pole. 
but with every issue also comes an opportunity and if thought out well there is a lot of money to be made from these cash rich valuation poor companies in all honesty a lot of it is to do with the timing of these cases take the us markets for instance and more specifically the nasdaq index which is down by a third this year one of the companies listed on that exchange is robin hood which has made a name for itself by disrupting the brokerage industry now in june of this year robin hood's share price hit an all time low of 6.89 dollars this meant the company's market capitalization had dropped from 70 billion to a tad below 6 billion significantly and around the same time the cash within the company was also 6 billion dollars a fact that the robin hood team was quick to mention in the second quarter earnings report so here's a business which is innovating is not profitable but thanks to sector wide valuation declines in the technology space it finds itself offering value investors a better bang for the buck to put it differently the parity between its cash and market cap has transformed robin hood from a growth stock to a value stock the robin hood example shows us how cash on the books can offer strong support when valuing a company and while a company trading at a price lower than its net cash might seem like a bargain buy one has to be very careful of not falling into a value trap A value trap is when an investor buys into a seemingly cheaply valued company only to find that the stock price continues to languish or drop further. Now valuations are a matter of opinions but one example that comes to my mind is HT Media Limited which is into newspapers, radio and digital platforms. I first looked at this company in 2017 when it was available at a PE of 9. a price to book multiple of less than 1 and had a sufficient cash balance of 930 crores however what i missed and what many analysts also missed were the many headwinds that this company was facing over the next 5 years the stagnating print business poor capital allocation decisions and a steady decline in advertising revenue had played its part and ht media's market cap fell by 75% in spite of an improved cash balance and price to book ratio so do take that extra care to not fall into the value trap especially if you using cash balances to support your investment thesis all right so let's understand in what ways we can use these cash rich valuation poor scenarios to our advantage the first opportunity shows up when a business is not expected to survive You see many companies go bankrupt and the usual process is to sell off the assets to pay the creditors and the money that remains is paid out to the shareholders. Now in some cases like what we saw with the Mazgaon dock ship builders if a company like that were to close down then it would put a lot more cash in the hands of their shareholders. In other words some companies are more valuable dead than alive. and it's a pattern that deep value investors often look for and don't mind investing in such companies where the probability and numbers are in their favor a second way to look at a cash rich company and something i advocate is by understanding its business and the industry it operates in so we are essentially looking for companies which have cash in their books and who are keen on participating in major and visible trends like climate healthcare digitization clean energy etc the idea here is to use the cash reserve as an acquisition or a growth engine and the early example we took of robin hood kind of fits within this cash rich but progressive industry criteria however we did talk about value traps and robin hood's quarterly losses and cash burns are something one needs to keep an eye on but unlike robin hood which was trading below cash there are a number of companies in india and abroad which now have a high cash proportion due to the big decline in valuation one such example is alibaba which has seen a market cap decline of 75% over the last 2 years in fact alibaba today trades at a price which is lower than its ipo price in 2014 but that doesn't take away the fact that alibaba's cash balance has increased by more than 10 fold since its ipo In fact at a current market cap of 200 billion dollars Alibaba's cash on books comes to an impressive 35% which is enough evidence of how a stock market that is in manic depressive mode 
offers smart investors with some great bargain. The third area to focus when working with cash rich companies is to do with timing the market. Broadly speaking, the best time to invest in stocks that are trading below its net cash value is when the market sentiments are positive and equities are in an uptrend. In other words, it's the start of a new sustainable bull market and the stock or the sector is attracting a lot of attention. For example, 2003 was a great time to reap substantial gains on selective technology stocks that were trading below cash value just a few months back. Also, it's quite possible that a majority of the cash rich valuation poor stocks are from the small cap category. Needless to say, these come with their own unique risks and investors must put an added layer of research and margin of safety before investing in them. This brings us to the final question that is, does this strategy of investing in cash rich companies really work? Well, logically, it's difficult to argue anything against it unless you have a habit of picking on value traps. But to answer this question, I shall rely on a blog that the team at Ticker Tape had written. The study that they had done had analyzed the performance of companies within the Nifty Small Cap 100 Index on the basis of a pre-selected criteria which had a lot of emphasis on profitability, cash flows and the company's cash balance. Their study showed that an equi-weighted portfolio of screen stocks would go on to outperform the index by over 8% over a 10 year period. So this is some evidence that a selection of cash rich companies can deliver a superior returns to its shareholders if it is timed well, if it is in a progressive industry, and if it's an anomaly that other smart investors are also realizing. Hopefully you too will cash in on the contents of today's video. And if you liked my presentation, then do subscribe to my channel and tell your friends about it. Once again, thank you for your time and I'll see you next week. Until then. Mm -hmm.